full-fledged at-home treatment system for mild COVID-19 patients amid the rapid spread of Omicron. President Moon Jae-in once again expresses his desire to hold an inter-Korean summit, saying it would be undesirable to set any preconditions. Figure skater Cha jun Hwan finishes fifth in the singles event at the Beijing Olympics, the country's best performance yet in men's figure skating. This is KBS World Radio News. I'm Tom McCarthy. The government on Thursday began enforcing a new management system for low-risk COVID-19 patients undergoing treatment at home. Under the revised system, low-risk COVID-19 patients who are responsible for their own at-home treatment will no longer receive daily health checkup calls from medical workers. This demographic accounts for approximately 80% of confirmed cases. Low-risk patients are now expected to self-monitor their condition at home and contact local clinics by phone for consultations or to obtain medicine prescriptions. for the first time to reach a new all-time high on Thursday amid the rapid spread of the Omicron variant. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency reported that 54,122 cases were compiled throughout the previous day, including 88 from overseas. The total case load came to 1,185,361. It is the first time the daily tally has exceeded 50,000 since the nation reported its first coronavirus case on January 20th of 2020. The figure is doubling almost every week, surpassing 20,000 last Wednesday and 40,000 this Wednesday. President Moon Jae-in said it would be undesirable to set any preconditions to holding an inter-Korean summit before his five-year term in office ends in May. Interviewed with news agencies from around the world, including Yonhap News Agency on Thursday, Moon stated that as long as there is a desire for dialogue, talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un could take place either in person or virtually. The president noted that the outcome of the March 9th presidential election may be a scenario rendering a summit inappropriate due to the fast approaching end of his term, potentially hampering the peace process. Addressing Seoul's push to declare a formal end to the Korean War, Moon said it may be overly ambitious to seek the declaration within his presidency. In the aftermath of the North series of ballistic missile tests since the start of the new year, Moon called for a resumption of dialogue with Pyongyang, seeking to persuade the regime to maintain its self-imposed nuclear and missile moratorium. to counter missile threats from North Korea. According to Seoul's defense ministry, Minister So spoke on the phone with his American and Japanese counterparts, Lloyd Austin and Nobuo Kishi, Thursday morning. In the talk, Minister So said that the North's recent missile tests, including the launch of an intermediate-range ballistic missile, pose a direct and serious threat to South Korea. He added that they are destabilizing acts and a challenge to the UN Security Council resolution. South Korea's top nuclear envoy, meanwhile, said on Wednesday that it is a very critical time that will determine whether the peninsular situation will return to a cold winter or a mild season. The U.S.-based North Korean monitoring website 38 North says that commercial satellite imagery of a training ground in Pyongyang shows several hundred personnel in formation, likely signaling a forthcoming parade. The imagery from February 5th shows hundreds of people gathering at a massive airport runway at the Inland Parade Training Ground designed to replicate Kim Il-sung Square in the heart of Pyongyang. Pyongyang does not announce these kinds of events in advance, but over the last several years, training at the site usually began one to several months ahead of festivities. There are several upcoming anniversaries that may feature mass parades, including the 80th anniversary of the birth of Kim Jong-il, father of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, on February 16th, and April 15th, which marks the 110th anniversary of the founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung's birthday. President Moon Jae-in on Thursday demanded an apology from the main opposition's presidential candidate after he expressed an intent to investigate alleged corruption during Moon's presidency. According to Park Soo-young, the senior presidential secretary for public communication, 
Moon expressed strong rage during a meeting with his aides over what he called groundless claims by People Power Party candidate Yoon Sung Yeol. Speaking to local daily Jungang Ilbo earlier this week, Yoon was asked whether he intended to conduct such an investigation against the previous government in similar fashion to Moon's administration upon its inauguration. Replying that he intended to do so, Yoon said he would not intervene as president and that any investigation would be carried out in accordance with the constitution and relevant principle. The PPP, meanwhile, strongly protested Moon's demand for an apology from its presidential candidate, accusing Moon of intervening in the March 9th presidential election. The National Assembly's Special Committee on Political Reform has agreed to extend the voting time of the March 9th presidential election to 7.30 p.m. to guarantee the voting rights of COVID-19 infected voters. The general public will head to the polls from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Representative Cho Hae-jin of the main opposition People's Power Party said that the ruling and opposition parties had tabled a bill on revising the Public Official Election Act to extend the voting hours to 9 p.m., but settled at 7.30 p.m. after opposition from the National Election Commission. You are now listening to the news from KBS World Radio News Center. Cha Jun Hwan made South Korean figure skating history, finishing fifth in the men's singles event at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics with a career best score. Following the free skating portion held at the on the foreign exchange, the local currency stayed even against the dollar, ending the day at 1,196.51. Welcome everyone to K-Pop Connection on KBS World Radio on this Thursday, February 10th, 2022. That was Rodney featuring Ash Island, a song called Winner. So, I got excited. I think a lot of people got excited when they heard this bit of news. The K-Pop legends that I'm talking about, the iconic group, arguably at least back in their day, before BTS was BTS, the biggest group in K-Pop, Big Bang. They are preparing to release new music, finally. It's been four long years, you guys. This is their first comeback in four years. People graduated high school and college during that time. People went through high school and college with no new Big Bang music. How crazy is that? Anyway, fans all over the world, they were ecstatic to hear about this. So much so that various search engines and their trending charts in not just Korea, but Japan, China, they were all dominated by this bit of news. So today, K-pop, it's really flourishing, right? We have a whole slew of great, great music, uh, just really top-notch great, arguably some of the best in the world. The quality of the songs, the choreography, the fashion style, the charisma, many, many groups just, they have it all so effortlessly. And we can't help but think that it wouldn't have panned this way had not, or had Big Bang not been paving the road for these acts of current date. Big Bang, they were the ones that sort of had it all in one package initially. We're talking the songs, the choreography, the style, the charisma that came effortlessly. That's the key word. It was effortless for them. They didn't try. It didn't feel artificial, right? Nobody can deny they were pivotal 
in pioneering the world of K-pop. So that's why this bit of news is really, really exciting, including for us. Meanwhile, I mean, there is that shadow that's going to probably follow Big Bang till the end of their days, and that's, of course, to me. The one in bed in the notorious Burning Sun scandal from back in 2019. He is out of the group. So we only have GD, Taeyang, Taesung, and Top. But I should also have a contract with YG also has come to an end. So don't fret. I mean, he is going to take part in the group's activities and the comeback, but he may not be present 100% of the time. Only time will tell. Well, this is the last release that they left us with back in 2018. Big Bang's Kokil Flower Road. That was Kukil, Flower Road by Big Bang. That's their most recent song, but just sit tight. We'll get more recent stuff coming up real soon, hopefully. Now, how did you into our show? Well, here's the rundown. We have shortwave radio, 9.515 megahertz bound for Europe, 9.630 megahertz bound for India. We have the apps like the KBS World Radio app, KBS World Radio on air app, KBS Cool app, and podcast, or whatever podcast app. You can go ahead and check out our website for more info, world.kbs.co.kr, or you can follow us on the gram. That's our direct social media site or, or, I guess, profile source that you can check out that links directly to K-pop Connection. So go ahead and follow us at KBS K-pop is the handle on the gram. And uh, that is also probably the easiest way you can get involved with our weekly segments, our Wednesday and Thursday segments. They really require your feedback. So please check it out, leave comments, and you may win a prize in the process. We do pick out one winner every Wednesday and then another winner every single Thursday. So there you go. We're going to get to two tracks, then we have our daily segment, Coffee or Tea. Here is Tessa singing I'm a Bee, and then following that, she's good with Butter Singake. Think about you. Would you like coffee or tea? This is a daily segment where we have a chit-chat. Let's refuel or wind down together, talking about everything and anything that sparks the conversation. We just cannot leave out period dramas when it comes to K-dramas. The beautiful outfits, the humbooks, right? We have the architecture of the more older fashion buildings like the Hanoks. And the lives of the royals, they continue to be popular for decades, series after series. Before we get to our Your Two Sons question, which is about K-drama soundtracks, here's something that may hopefully enrich your background knowledge of the Joseon era here in Korea. Recent research at the Academy of Korean Studies revealed their discovery on the average lifespan of those that lived during the Joseon era. That took place from 1392 to 1910. And they found that women were the longest living individuals out of anyone. More specifically, while an average woman from the noble class lived to 45 on average, queens lived considerably longer lives. Their average lifespan was about 51 years. This means they outlived kings, whose average lifespan was estimated to be about 47 years by some scholars. But a different group of women lived the longest. We're talking about the king's concubines. They outlived the queen by an average of six years. Perhaps because they were free, being under great psychological pressure and stress, right? The scholar has analyzed data on 46 queens and some 48 of the era's total, 175 concubines, whose age of death is known. And the study looked into the cause of death of 97 queens and concubines. The number one cause of death was 
illness, as stated in historical documents. Forced death or execution, that was the number two death. And number three reason was death during or after childbirth. Can you imagine dying at the age of 40, what was it, 47 for kings and 51 for queens? That means J-Lo would be dead. <laughs> you know, J-Lo's like 51 or a little bit older, and she doesn't look very old at all. What's examples here in Korea? Who's 50? I know Pak Sung, the comedian, is over 50. Yoo Jae Suk is probably around that camp, No. No, maybe not. I don't want to insult him. <laughs> I'm not too sure, actually. But, wow, that's, yeah, that's not very long at all. Thank goodness for modern-day medicine that's uh, evolved and advanced to keep us alive a little bit longer, at least on average. Oh, health is wealth, you guys. Health is wealth. Let's listen to Lynn. This is from the soundtrack of Hepkindai, uh, uh, which was, uh, what was the translation? Loosely translated as moon that... Hugged or embraced the stars? No, no, no. Hepum Tai. No, the sun that embraced the, the moon. <laughs> it starred um, Hangai and uh, Kim Si Hyun, so that's a big deal. The song Shigan or Gosalop, Back in Time. And then we have Melo Monks singing Chuan Nice. Good day.